right, this is the piece of furniture that we are going to be painting today. I have had this forever. It has been transported from house to house and been stored in the garage. But um, when my mother, before my mom passed away, she created a grandchildren's room in her house for the kid, grandkids. And this was the dresser which she would store things in. So it's a special dresser to me and it's in really good shape, but it needs some paint to give it new life. So we are going to paint this the color Navel by Sherwin-Williams today. So these are the tools I'm gonna to use to do my painting of this um, dresser. I'm gonna use this clear cut purdy. It's an angled brush and I'm gonna use that to just get into any edges or places where it's a little harder to get with the roller. And then I got this mini roller. I'm gonna be using this. And I got these jumbo ultra finish. It says ultra smooth finish, 3 8 inch nap. So that's what I'm gonna be using for the furniture. So the first thing you want to do is to remove the hardware so that you can paint. This uh, piece of furniture has one knob missing and I have not been able to find it. So I am going to have to replace my hardware. Um, if you don't have to replace your hardware, you can just take it off and then after you're finished painting, you can put it back on. So if all your knobs are in good shape, you may want to just reuse them or you can paint them um, a different color or you could replace them with a different knob. I'm going to either replace it with a single knob or something like this. Uh, but what I will do is once I paint it, I'll kind of decide I'll either replace it with a single knob or I will just use that knob, that uh, screw right there and put my handle like this. I'm, I'm trying to decide if I want a single knob or a cup pull. So after you have removed all the hardware, it's time to clean the piece. So get your favorite cleaner. I love using a uh, magic eraser because it's really, really good at getting everything clean. And so I'm gonna clean really well. And then if there's anything left over, any residue, I'll get it when I sand this piece. But right now I'm gonna clean. Okay, after I've cleaned the piece really well, it's time to sand it. You can use a sanding sponge, but I am going to go with a palm sander. It's a 180 grit sanding disc, and I'm gonna just sand very lightly. You're just trying to get off any leftover dirt or residue, and you're trying to rough up the surface just barely so that the paint will adhere really well. Um, and then you can use a sanding sponge, like I said, on the edges or the rounded parts. I'm just gonna use an extra sanding disc to kind of get into those areas. Okay, before you sand, if you have any holes or imperfections in your wood that you would like to fill in and make smooth, you can fill it in with wood, wood filler, let it dry, and then sand it when you're doing the sanding process um, to get rid of those imperfections. I have imperfections, but I like them, and I'm going to leave them there. So I'm skipping this step, but you could totally get rid of those with wood filler if you want to. So once you've sanded, you're going to have this dust on here that you need to get off. So the best thing I love using are these tack cloths and they just remove dust and everything super easy.
All right, the next step is to paint the furniture. Now, a lot of people will prime furniture before they paint it, and you can totally get that. You can get a primer, and you could roll that on if you want to, and then use your paint. But nowadays, a lot of paint comes with primer already in it. I'm using this Valspar cabinet and furniture paint. It says that no sanding or priming is needed. So this is what I'm gonna use, and I got it tinted um, navel. It's Sherwin-Williams color called navel. It's a beautiful navy blue. And then to do that, I just need two tools to paint paint. I'm gonna use this clear cut, uh, pretty clear cut brush. It's an angled brush, and I like to use it to get in all the parts where the roller doesn't get to. And then this is the uh, ultra, ultra finish mini roller, jumbo roller. So that's what I'm gonna use to roll on all the flat surfaces. Okay, one more thing. You want to put your paint on really thin. You don't wanna put it on very thick. So I will definitely do two coats, maybe three, but I will do one really thin coat, let it dry really good before I do a second coat, and then I'll determine whether I need to do a third. All right, so I have the first coat on and it gets darker as it dries, but you can see it's just a really light coat. You can kind of see the wood grain underneath there. And um, so yeah, it says on the can to let it uh, dry about four hours in between each coat. So we'll let that dry and then we'll do another coat. So the first coat of paint is finished, it is dry, and now I'm going to lightly sand it again with that 180 grit sanding paper just to make it completely smooth before I put on the second coat. All right, we let the dresser dry really good overnight, and now I'm gonna add the hardware, and I'm recruiting my handsome husband to help me out. Yes, you are. <laughs> so these doors originally were one knob, and I need two because these have two, so we're just going to use that one and create a new hole over here. 